Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In our previous lecture, we demonstrated how to make a flat plate stable. So, before that, we have de derived an equation or the conditions for static stability for a wing alone configuration, and then we have taken a flat plate and then we mounted a weight to bring it CG ahead of the aerodynamic center, and we had a flight for it. Right? Now, let's solve some more example problems related to this flat plate stability. How to make, st how to enable the flat plate statically stable with static stability right so we'll we'll solve few example problems just before that uh, let us have a revisit of what we have derived so assuming this is my fuselage reference line and say my wing error or cord line coincides with the fuselage reference line and say this is my location of aerodynamic center ac of the wing measured with respect to leading edge of the wing parallel to the fuselage reference line. So, we call this as XAC of wing, XAC of wing right. and say the, the CG of the system is located at a distance XCG again measured parallel to the fuselage reference line located at XCG of this entire aircraft. So, when there is flow V infinity so there is lift as we discussed earlier and also and now we will not consider drag anymore we will not account that and we will also assume a small angle of attack so that the lift is entirely contributing towards this pitching moment about the center of gravity here so this is my cg and we have moment about aerodynamic center moment about aerodynamic center of wing so, what we have derived is CM naught of this aircraft has to be CM AC of the wing plus CL naught of the wing times X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing and at the same time we also looked at the CM alpha the sufficient condition is CL alpha of the wing times X bar CG minus x bar ac of v ok. So, if this c m alpha has to be negative the c g should lie ahead of the aerodynamic center here and so if it lies ahead of the aerodynamic center. So, this term becomes negative. So, you need to choose a c m ac of the wing right if you have if you are dealing with a wing alone configuration in such a way that you no know, uh, this value should be high enough to overcome this particular uh, negative value right. So, the difference between these two terms will we will talk about it uh, in, in the coming lectures what exactly this term uh, this difference talks about. So, in order to overcome this difference in the negative contribution towards the C m naught because of the C g lying ahead of the aerodynamic center you need to choose a reflex an aerofoil with a strong C m a c pause or pause to C m a c here ok. And then yeah. So, let us now take up a problem. So, the question one for this week is uh, consider your wing along UAV with the wingspan of of three meters root code of point three meters and tip code of point two meters tapered about about C by two at any liquidation C of y by 2. So, it is a midpoint no tapered about 
C of Y, if you consider any chordwise location. Right. So, it is it, the taper axis lies at the midpoint of the chord. And varies about point four five kg. The Oswald sufficiency of the wing factor E is point nine five. And say this wing, this wing is supported with a boom, the straight boom near the straight boom exactly at the midway midway or span of length one point five meters. The wing is also equipped or embedded with with a three cell three S lipo battery. Weighs about point three k point three kg and the CG the battery is at point one five meters from the or with respect to the leading edge of root cord. Okay. Question number one should be the first question you need to answer here. So let us say A. So what should be the weight of the battery? And consider so here. Consider the CG of the wing coincides with the CG of boom. Okay. This is the question. And the first, this is the data given. And the first question you need to answer is, what should be the weight of the battery? Sorry, the weight of the brushless motor or say weight minimum weight minimum. Weight of the brushless motor that need that need to be attached at the starting of the boom to 
enable this configuration cm alpha less than cm okay so this is what it is so let's answer the first question here so from the given data solution so what we are asked to do we have a wing of uh, 3 meter span with a root chord of 0.3 meters and a tip chord of 0.15 meter and this taper happen to be the mid chord axis at each and every cross section if you consider like at a chord, given chord wise location the midpoint of that particular chord gives you the taper axis and the with the root chord of 0.3 and the tip chord of 0.2 meters and this wing weighs about say 0.45 kg that's what it that's what it is given here so 0.45 kg here so and then this this wing is uh, is supported by means of a boom like fuselage for it right so this boom length is about 1.5 meters with uh, yeah which 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 weighs about 150 grams right so this is and moreover say for example this wing is also let us say so so we have a wing here and it is equipped with a boom right and then this wing is also equipped with a battery let us say this is my this is a battery and it is equipped with a it is embedded with a battery means the battery is inside this wing altogether and say the wing uh, the weight of the battery is about 300 grams and the cg of the battery is say 15 cm from the leading edge of the root cord so this say this is my leading edge of the root cord say 15 cm behind the cg of this battery is 15 cm behind the root cord leading edge of the root cord right and also the cg of this wing which is at the yeah is coincides with the cg of the boom okay and assume let us assume that the cg the weight distribution is or say the cg of the wing is at the mid chord itself okay so this is the another assumption we'll consider so what you can see is uh, the wing cg is at the mid chord no? yeah. so about the taper axis is, uh, itself the cg of the wing is also present longitudinal cg location so now so from the given data we will be able to draw the uav schematic of the uav let us say this is the boom right which is about 1.5 meters so say this is 1.5 meters let me let me reduce the size otherwise i may not be draw able to draw it to the scale draw it to the scale okay so the so this is yeah 1.5 meters 1.5 meters okay and then i have a wing of 3 meters and the cg will be at c by 2 isn't it with a root chord of say 0.3 meters and the tip chord of 0.2 meters okay so first let us figure out the taper axis and we were told the cg is at the midpoint of the cord of the wing itself so let us assume this is the midpoint of this particular tube right or the boom because it's a it's a cylindrical boom and then we can assume a hum homogeneous uh, distribution here so the cg can be at the l by 2 right so that's a decent assumption so the cg is at say 1.5 meters so the cg is at 0.75 meters right so with respect to the starting of this boom the cg of this boom is at 0.75 meters and the taper axis of the wing will also be at 0.75 meters with respect to this boom yeah, starting of the boom isn't it why because the cg of the wing coincides with the cg of the yeah cg of the boom and and it presents at the midpoint of the cord of the cord which is the taper axis itself right so this will be say my taper axis which is the midpoints of the cord so this is my root cord root cord is given as 0.3 meters right so say this is my root cord let us say the root cord is 0.15 meters ahead 
and 4.15 meters behi behind the taper axis, right? So, which is total 0.3 meters, right? So, this is my root chord CR and say the tip chord again is tapered about the same axis. So, what I have is 0.2 is the total chord. So, I have 0.1 meters above the taper axis and then 0.1 meters below the taper axis here, okay. So, 0.1 meters below the taper axis. So, this will be my wing. So, I will join the leading edge and the trailing edge of all the chords here. So, this is my wing, right. So, similarly here, I can assume. This is my wing of this UAV and the span of the wing is given as so 3 meters, right. Okay, make sense. Now I have root chord here C R, this, this entire part is my root chord. So the entire part is C R which is 0.3 and CT which is 0.2 from the given data and the CG of this lies at the midpoint of the root chord, right? isn't it? So, and it coincides with the mid CG of this boom which is at 0.75 meters with respect to the starting of this boom, with respect to the mouth of the boom we can say here. Now, we need to attach a motor to this boom such that the CG of this entire configuration and again yeah just so, just to add this point as well, there is a battery, right. So, this battery weighs about, so let us say whatever the weight must be distributed. So, so the CG of this battery is also coinciding with the CG of the entire system because it was given the CG of the battery is at 0.15 meters with respect to the leading edge of the root cord. So, this is my leading edge of the root cord, 0.15 meters from the leading edge of the root cord falls on this taper axis, which is in fact the CG of V, CG of the boom as well as CG of the battery. Let us assume this is the distribution of my battery along the span, which weighs about 0.3 kg, right. So, and the CG of this battery is also at this particular location, right. So, now what I can do is <coughs> X CG of battery. So, superscript here B stands for battery, okay. So, X CG of the battery is at 0.15 meters okay, with respect to the leading edge of the root cord and the mass of the battery is 0.3 kg. So, this, that is what it is given 0.3 kg, 0.15 meters and then the wing X CG of the wing is, is at 0.15 meters again with respect to loading edge of the root cord and the mass of the wing is about 0.45 kg and we have the boom. So, X CG of the boom is equals to 0.15 meters with respect to leading edge of the root cord, is not it? So, with respect to, so let us say 0.15 meters. So, if I write, uh, if I do not write anything beneath this CG right as a, as a subscript to CG. So, that means it is we are measuring with respect to the leading edge of the root cord ok. So, and the C mass of the boom is. So, let me let me add B T for battery right B T for battery and B O for boom ok. So, so B O for boom here B T for battery ok. So, so, the boom mass is about 150 grams, right, 0.15 kg. So, the boom CG can also be uh, like we can also take the ref CG length, CG reference with respect to the lead, uh, starting point of this boom. So, the CG with respect to or say, so the CG in all these cases with respect to the starting of this boom with respect to this point. Right? So, X. CG 
of battery with respect to boom, right? Let's say WRT with respect to boom, BO with respect to BO is equals to 0 0.75 meters. In all the case, it is 0 0.75 meters, right? It's a 0 0.75 meters. So similarly, XCG of wing with respect to BO with respect to boom, right? With respect to boom is also 0 0.75 meters. And XCG of battery with respect to boom is also 0 0.75 meters. Okay. We will see why we require this. So, for this particular configuration, the CG is more or less same, is not it? M1 X1 plus M2 X2 plus M3 X3 upon M1 plus M2 plus M3 sigma M, is not it? So, in all the cases, XCG is same with respect to the boom, with respect to the starting of boom. We can say the CG of this entire system, which includes battery, wing and the boom is at 0 0.75 meters from the starting of the boom, right? So, let us say this is for the rest, what we can call it as, so M, so M of rest, mass of the rest, apart from the motor that we have to add, mass of the rest is equals to mass of uh, battery, okay, so is equals to mass of battery plus mass of wing plus mass of BO, boom, okay, which is equals to 0 0.9 kg, okay. We can add it 0.3 plus 0.45 is 0.75 plus 0 0.15 is 900 grams, okay. So that is a, and the CG of all this, CG of rest, I should say, X CG of rest is equals to 0 0.75 meters. So, with all these components together, the CG is also at 0 0.75 meters, okay. Now, what do we need to find? So, what should be the weight of the, so, first of all, whether to talk about, uh, if you have to talk about CM alpha, we need to know what is the aerodynamic center. So, CM alpha, we can talk only when we know what is XCG and XAC. CL alpha is positive, let us, we do not go into those details of CL alpha right now. Right, but if you if you if you want CM alpha positive or negative, that is governed by this distance between XCG and XAC. So I need to know what is the location of XCG and XAC of this particular configuration. Right. First of all, let us figure out what is the current XCG of this location. Right. And we know it is 0.75 meters. Right. We want to know what is the aerodynamic center for this. So that means. So with the given data, we should be able to find out mean aerodynamic chord and project the mean aerodynamic chord onto the root chord and figure out the corresponding aerodynamic center with respect to leading edge of the root chord or with respect to the boom here, correct. So if you are talking about this particular equation, then let us talk in terms of leading edge of the root chord itself, okay. So CM alpha is equals to CL alpha of wing times X bar CG minus X bar AC of wing, right. So if this has to so, we know what is XCG here. So, CL alpha of wing is equals to, with respect to leading edge of the root chord, it is about 0.15 meters. Am I correct? So, this is 0 0.15 meters minus X bar AC of wing, right. So, I need to find out what is X bar AC of wing. So, how can I find? So, First, let me, I uh, will find out what is C bar. C bar is 2 third CR times 1 plus lambda plus lambda square upon 1 plus lambda. It is a straight tapered beam, right. So, 2 third times CR is 0 0.3 meters times what is lambda here? So, lambda is equals to CT upon CR. So, CT is 0 0.2 upon CR is 0 0.3, which is 0.67, okay. So, multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.67 plus 0 0.67 square upon 1.67. So, it turns out to be, so C bar 
is equals to 0.254 meters. Okay. So C bar is 0.254 meters. So now project this onto the root cord. How can we do that? See, we know this point that is C bar by 2 and C R by 2, they lie on the same axis because the tap, it is the taper axis. So, we, we know these two points lie on the same axis. You can simply, so if you want to know uh, the difference between the leading edge of the mean aerodynamic cord and the leading edge of the root cord, it is simply C bar, C R by 2 minus C bar by 2 because this is the midpoint of each and every cord. If you project it onto the root cord, that is the midpoint here. Okay. So, this is 0 0.254 is the total C bar. Let us say this is my total C bar which is 0 0.254. If I project it onto the root cord, so what I have is, so let us say this is my uh, mean aerodynamic cord, right? I projected it onto the root cord. So what I have is, so 0 0.254 is the total, half of that will be 0 0.127, right? 12.7 centimeters. So, above the taper axis it is 12.7, below the taper axis it is 12.7, 12 12.7 centimeters, right? Which is 0 0.127 meters, okay? So, this is my C bar by 2. So, this is like C bar by 2. This is also C bar by 2, okay? So, I know the aerodynamic center here, X A C, let us say, is at certain point. So, with respect to leading edge of the root cord, it is at a distance of, so say this is my aerodynamic center, X A C. This is my, this point, yellow point is my A C. So, A C we know C bar by 4, am I correct? This is C bar by 4. XAC is C bar by 4 with respect to the leading edge of the C bar. Now, in order to find this location of aerodynamic center with respect to the leading edge of the root cord, what I need to do? I have CR by 2, I know C bar by 2 because this is tapered about mid axis and subtract C bar by 2 from CR by 2. So, what, what I have reached with respect to leading edge of the root cord is leading edge of the mean aerodynamic cord. So, from there, one fourth from there is my aerodynamic center. So, what I mean here is X bar or X AC aerodynamic center. So, this is with respect to leading edge of CR, okay, is equals to. So, so there is no, see this is by default we, we are doing this, we always considered with respect to leading edge, but here there is a need for us to talk with respect to the leading edge of the boom as well. So, that is the reason why in order to avoid confusion, here we are talking about X aerodynamic center with respect to the leading edge of the root cord, right. So, I have C R by 2, right, C R by 2, so C R, C R by 2 minus C bar by 2, C bar, C bar by 2. So, with this I have now reached from leading edge of the root cord, I have reached to the leading edge of the mean aerodynamic cord plus C bar by 4. Okay. So, from leading edge of the root cord, so this takes me from the leading edge of the uh, root cord to leading edge of the mean aerodynamic cord. From leading edge of the mean aerodynamic cord, I am reaching aerodynamic center here, C bar by 4. Right. So, this equals to C r by 2 minus C bar by 4. Okay. So, what is C r by 2? Is 15 centimeters. Right. Minus C bar by 4 is like, so C bar is 28, right? So, 25 centimeters upon, upon 4 is approximately point, yeah, 0 point 0.0635, 6, 4 is 24, right? Approximately 6 centimeters, is not it? So, if you subtract this, what I have is 0 0.0865 meters. So, with respect to leading edge of the root cord, this particular value, the location is at 0 0.0865 meters, which is 8.6 centimeters. 
approximately. So if you move down to 8.6 with respect to leading edge of the root cause, you will find your aerodynamic center here, right? So now, so we got to know 0.15 is the CG with respect to leading edge of the root cord. And now you know the aerodynamic center with the, of the wing, aerodynamic center of the wing with respect to the leading edge of the root cord. So can I substitute that value here? So what I have is CL alpha of wing times 0.15 minus 0.0865. This is equals to 0.6 or 0.635, so this value turns out to be that, so which is, which is close to 6 centimeters, that means this is positive, so CM alpha is becoming positive here. So with the current CG location, it is positive without adding any motor. Now what we are asked is, what should be the minimum weight of the brushless motor that need to be attached to the straight, to at the starting of the boom, right? So we need to add some mass here. Let us assume that as this, that as this particular block. Now that motor as this particular block here. So say this is my brushless motor I am attaching to the boom here, okay. This is my brushless motor. So I, it is attached exactly, the, let us assume the CG of this motor coincides with the starting point of the boom, okay. That is one assumption that we will consider. And now with this attachment. So the CG now has to shift forward, we know that, right? So what should be that minimum weight of this motor that makes this configuration CM alpha negative, okay? Is it clear? That means a mass of the motor which is say, mass of the motor mm is the mass of the motor that I need to attach to make this configuration stable, right? So at least in case of CM alpha, it has to be less than zero. So now I need to talk everything with respect to the leading edge of the boom because this is attached at the boom, right? So now I will try to talk about the CG location with respect to the leading edge of the boom, okay? So for that what I need to do, so what should be the minimum location in the first place or what is the boundary condition when CM alpha is 0, am I correct? So right now it is positive if it has to go to negative and there should be a point where CM alpha is also 0. There should be a CG location where CM alpha is 0. So what should be that location? CM alpha can be 0 when CG is equals to aerodynamic center. So now let us find out if the, so what is that weight no, that we are adding ahead of this wing that brings the CG to the aerodynamic center. See right now the CG is at this taper axis, aerodynamic center is here, right? So I need to bring the CG of this entire configuration without motor to this aerodynamic center by adding a particular motor. Now I need to choose what should be the minimum weight of that motor, right? So first of all, the minimum weight to make it CM alpha negative, we need to know the weight of the motor that we are going to add, right? That makes this aerodynamic uh, CG coincides with aerodynamic center, am I correct? Right? So first if we find out that any, more, any mass more than that, we will try to shift the CG ahead of the aerodynamic center that makes that particular CM alpha negative for this configuration, okay? So I need to add, first of all I will find out the boundary condition that makes CG coincide with the aerodynamic center with the motor, right? So CM alpha for me to become zero, right? Which implies XCG, XCG should be XAC for this of wing. Am I correct? So by just by substituting that CM alpha 0 in the previous equation, so what we have is this XCG must be equals to XAC of the wing, right? Now if this has to be the final XCG, what should be the mass of the motor? Now what is the total mass of the aircraft? Let us assume M represents the total mass of the aircraft, right? That is equals to, earlier it was like mass of wing, M of wing plus mass of battery, BT and we have mass of the boom as well, right? So M of boom, BO and now, so we, we call this particular expression like this as M of rest, right? So that is the reason why we used rest and now what we have is in addition to it, we are adding a motor, mass of motor, 
okay, which we need to find out in fact. Right? So what, what I have here as an expression, m is equals to total mass of the aircraft is mass of rest plus mass of motor. So I know mass of rest is 0.9 kg, right? So mass of rest is about 0.9 kg plus mass of motor. Okay. And now with the addition of this mass at x, so what is the location of this mass? What is the CG location of this mass with respect to boom? So x mm is a mass of motor. And the corresponding x CG of motor is zero. It is exactly with respect to the boom, right? I'm talking with respect to the boom, right? It is exactly at the leading edge of the boom or you can say at the starting of the boom okay so with that assumption so the new new cg i need is x aerodynamic center here right so the new cg what i need is nothing but the aerodynamic center of the wing is at the aerodynamic center of the wing which is about 0.75 meters no i'm sorry so what is the aerodynamic center of this wing with respect to the boom leading edge of the boom So I know what is this, With, so I know CR by 2, I know boom length up to here is 0.75 meters, I can subtract CR from here CR by 2 plus what is the corresponding XAC, am I correct or not, am I correct or not. So now we are talking with respect to the boom, so XCG should, is equals to, so 0.75 is half of the length of the boom minus CR by 2. CR by 2 plus X AC of wing with respect to leading edge of CR. Okay. So this particular value is with respect to leading edge of the CR here, root chord. So 0.75 is length by 2, that is where the CG is, current CG is. Am I correct? Minus CR by 2 is the root chord. I am subtracting this root chord from that this entire length so that I reach this particular leading edge of the root chord. From there again I am adding XAC which is aerodynamic center with respect to the leading edge of the root chord. So this is equals to 0 0.75 minus 0 0.15 minus plus 0 0.0865. So this equals to, so the new CG with respect to the boom. So CG with respect to the boom has to be with respect to the boom, new CG, this is the new CG, okay, so new, has to be at 0 0.065, which is nothing but the aerodynamic center, location of the aerodynamic center of the wing with respect to the leading edge of the boom, or say starting point of the boom, 0 0.0.6865 meters. So, it is about 68 centimeters from the starting of the boom, right. So XCG, this is the new XCG. Now, in order to achieve this new XCG, what should be the mass that I need to add, right? Okay, so how can I find it out? So I am again erasing this part. So XCG, or the new XCG, new XCG, or it has to be the X aerodynamic center, both with respect to leading edge or uh, with respect to boom, starting of boom is equals to M1 or MM motor mass times is the additional weight, right? So with this additional weight, we are trying to shift to the new CG from the current CG, which is nothing but the aerodynamic center of the boom. So MM times X CG of motor plus the rest. M rest times X C G of the rest upon total weight here, isn't it? M M plus rest, M rest, M M plus M rest is 0 0.9 kg, okay. So I need to find out what is M M from here, fine. So the new C G which I want is 
0.865 meters is equals to so mm times 0 right isn't it mm times 0 xcg of motor is 0 that's what we have and plus 0.9 times 0.75 is the cg of the rest you can see that no cg of the rest is 0.75 upon what you have is mm plus 0.9 right mm plus 0.9 so if you solve this mm is equals to 0.9832 minus 0 0.9 right so this mass of the battery is is equals to 0 0.0832 grams or oh sorry kg which is approximately 83.2 grams so you need to at least choose a motor right which weighs about 83 grams in order to make cm alpha zero and now you need to choose anything more than this 83.2 grams to make it positive negative right cm alpha negative so in order to make cm alpha less than zero so i need a motor of mass which is greater than 83.2 grams okay is it clear so now if you find this 83.2 if you take any weight more than this 83.2 grams and you find the new cg location then if you substitute that cg location and the corresponding aerodynamic lo center location in the equation you will be able to find cm alpha is negative right that is how you are shifting the cg ahead of the aerodynamic center here so this is the motor that we require okay we can solve the second problem now so the second question b b question b for this is assume the cross section cross section of the wing in question 1 or question a is so naca 23 112 airfoil which is a reflex airfoil here right reflex airfoil with the following data what it is alpha and C alpha is in degree okay so first is at 0 degrees angle of attack this is approximately 0 0.08 right this is 0 0.08 and then at 6 degrees angle of attack it is 0 0.481 data given for the airfoil right and also the cmlc so also the cm about aerodynamic center or cmc by 4 so more or less same no unless there is a huge deviation so cmc by 4 is close to 0 0.03 0 0.03 so that's a reflex airfoil that we can talk about. we we can immediately get to know that no cmac is positive it's a reflex airfoil and the wing cmac con and consider the wing cmac is 0.9 percent of or 90 percent sorry 90 percent of cmac of airfoil okay or 90% of airfoil CMAC. Okay. So 
So, what do we require to find? First thing is what should be the maximum weight? What what will what is the maximum weight? Weight of the motor. for which C M naught is still greater than 0. Okay. So, let us first look at the given data. So, what do we need to do no, in the first place? We, we are asked C M naught has to be greater than 0. C M naught of this is equals to C M A C of the wing plus C L naught times x bar c g minus x bar a c of the wing. Correct. Okay. So, for c m naught has to be positive, right. So, this has to be, this is given as 0 0.03 times 90 percent is 0 0.09, 0 0.9 percent right? multiplied by 0 0.9, which is 0 0.027 kind. What is the value? 0 point, 0 point 0 0.027, right? Okay. Plus C L naught times x bar C G minus x bar A C of Okay. So this is 0 point 0 0.027 plus C L naught times x bar C G upon x bar A C of V. So, without adding the motor, we know what is the XCG, right, is not it? So, it is at 0 0.75 meters and the aerodynamic center is behind, ahead of the CG and we know this is positive, right. And this is positive, CM naught is positive. By adding the motor, we brought CG ahead of the aerodynamic center, right, is not it? If you add a motor which is anything greater than say 84 grams, that means this will, this quantity will be lesser than this quantity. Okay. This makes it negative and the, so now you are subtracting it from this positive CMAC. The reflex aerofoil which you have considered to trim at posterior angle of attack. Now you are trying to compromise at the right by bringing the CG more forward. Okay. Now say if we consider a motor which is heavy enough to make this particular quantity more negative than this CMAC of the wing. If you do so then CM naught becomes negative. Right, which is undesirable in our case. Am I correct? That means first we have to find out that limiting condition. What we are asked? So, what should be the weight of the motor that shifts the CG so much that it makes CM not negative? Or say, or what is the maximum weight that you can afford? If we have to afford, then CM not has to be positive, right? Isn't it? So, in order to fly, trim at positive angle of attack, CM had CM not has to be positive. So, that means this particular quantity. The, the maximum weight, say the minimum weight is about 84 grams. Now, say if you consider it 200, whether it should be 200 grams or 300 grams, that makes this still positive. So, in order to get that answer, first we need to find out what is the limiting condition. When can CM naught has to be 0? When can CM naught become 0? What should be the weight of the battery need to add such that this quantity becomes negative, right, is or exactly equal to this particular quantity? Am I correct or not? So, what will be the corresponding CG location for that? Aerodynamic center is not going to change, right. So, only CG will change with the addition of motor. Now, we know aerodynamic center of the wing with respect to boom there, is not it? So, now we can write with respect to the boom there, okay. The distances we shift the reference to the boom right now and then substitute them here and see may and uh, equate the CM naught to 0 and see find and find out what is the corresponding CG location. Once you know the CG equation, you know that should be the CG that you need to achieve by adding a motor of mass m. So, figure out what should be the maximum motor weight of the motor, ok, got it. So, if I have to shift this, let us say we will find out the CG location with respect to the root cord itself, then we will try to shift it, right. First of all, this is with respect to the root cord of the leading edge, this equation is, respect, is with respect to the root cord of the leading edge, right. So, now 
x bar cg or x cg should be equal to x cg should be equal to minus 0 0.027 upon cl naught right cl naught of the wing uh, plus x x bar or x ac of the wing let us for the time x bar ac of the wing okay this equals to x cg is equals to minus 0 0.027 upon cl naught times c bar plus x ac of the wing so this entire thing is with respect to leading edge of cr okay we know what is c bar c bar is 0.285 approximately so first of all we need to find out what is cl naught in order to solve this question we need to find what is cl naught so from the given data so i am plotting the given data here so the information that i am having is at zero angle of attack say this is my alpha and this is my cl 2d cl okay so error fall cl so this at zero angle of attack i have cl naught of the error foil Right. This becomes CL naught of the aerofoil. So this is aerofoil data. 0 0.08. So this point corresponds to 0 0.08 here. Okay. And there is another point. So this corresponds to 0. So there is another point at 6 degrees angle of attack. So what I have is CL as how much? 0.481. So this particular point corresponds to 0 0.481. So this coordinate corresponds to 6 degrees comma 0 0.481 and this coordinate corresponds to 0 comma 0 0.08. So say this is a linear regime. Okay, this is the linear regime that I am considering. So first of all I need I can find out what is the slope of this curve. So this point corresponds to alpha at which CL is equals to 0. Okay. So first of all I need to find out what is this slope. So the two dimensional slope CL alpha is equals to 0 0.481 upon minus 0 0.08 right upon 6 degrees multiplied by pi by 180. So what is the value? So CL alpha is equals to 2D is equals to 4.6 per radian, right? This is per radian. So that's the reason why we multiply per radian. Okay. Now I have 2D CL alpha. I will be able to find out 3D CL alpha. Am I correct or not? So how can I do that? So 3D CL alpha is equals to CL alpha 2D upon 1 plus C, uh, CL alpha 2D over pi e AR. So Oswald's efficiency was given earlier. So what is the aspect ratio here? We need to know what is the aspect ratio. So from the given geometry, from the given geometry it is aspect ratio is equals to B square by S which is 3 square which is 9 upon. What is S? What is the area of this? Sir, C L alpha not getting 4.6. Yeah, please make a correction, small correction here. This is not 0.4, this is 0.56. Uh, so consider this as 0.5614. Okay. So if I have at 6 degrees, it is 0.56. Okay. It is 0 0.56. Okay. 0 0.56 this one. Uh, so, if you substitute that 0 0.56, so what you have is 4.6 per radian here, right. Once you substitute this 4.6, so we need to find out what is the aspect ratio. So, B square by S, S you can find out B by 2 upon CR plus CT, right. What is the value here? B by 2 is 3 meters upon 2 is 1.5 times CR plus CT is 0.5. 0.75, isn't it? S is 0 0.75 meter square. Ravijit? 
0.75 meter square. So, this is aspect ratio is 12. Okay. So, 900 upon 75 is 12 there. So, 1 plus Cl alpha is 4.6 upon 3.14 times 0.95 is the aspect ratio that we considered earlier. Sorry, 0.95 is the Ospol's efficiency factor and from the given data you refer to the previous question and the aspect ratio here is 12. So, the value is approximately 0 4.05 per radian. Okay. So, Cl alpha 3D for this particular configuration is 4.05 per radian. Okay. Now, once you have Cl alpha 3D, you need to find out Cl naught 3D, right. So, that may be for example, so say this is my, so that is for infinite wing, this is for finite wing, right. So, this is for AR infinity, so this is for AR 12, that is for AR infinite, right. So, I know what is the lift curve slope 3D right now. So, in order to find out CL naught here, this is the CL naught that is required, CL naught. So, this is this is from here, right? CL naught point. But I do not know how to find out because I have only CL alpha 3D, right, for this blue curve. So, but we know that it is a decent assumption to have, uh, to consider that the lift coefficient uh, or the angle of attack at which the lift coefficient is 0 is same for finite wing as well as infinite wing. That is a decent assumption that we considered earlier. So, for if we can find out this alpha at which Cl is 0, then I will be able to find out Cl naught there because I will have one point, another quarry point and the slope there. Right? So, how can I find out that from the aerofoil data? So, I know what is Cl alpha 4.6 and I know Cl naught from the given data. Cl naught from the given data is 0 0.56, uh, sorry 0 0.08. So, this is 0 0.8 from the given data. I have the slope as well. So, I will be able to find out that. So, alpha at which Cl is equals to 0 is equals to Cl alpha 2D minus Cl at alpha 0 or Cl naught, right. What is the value? minus 0.99 degrees which is approximately minus 1 degree. Okay. So, this value corresponds to minus 1 degree. So, this particular value corresponds to minus 1 degree here, right. So, once I know what is uh, alpha at which Cl is 0 which is minus 1 degree, I will be able to find out this is minus 1 degree comma 0 this particular coordinates. So, I will be able to find out what is Cl naught. So, how can I do that? Cl naught is equals to Cl alpha, Cl alpha minus Cl alpha times alpha at which Cl is 0, alpha at which Cl is 0. This is equals to minus 4.05 times minus 1 multiplied by pi by 180 because Cl alpha is in per radian. So, what I have is approximately 0. 0, 7. So, I have C L naught right now and I know C bar and I know with respect to the leading edge of the wing, I get to know, I, I can find out what is the corresponding C G location with respect to the leading edge of the wing. Right? So, if I substitute that C L naught in this particular equation. So, now the X C G is equals to minus 0 0.027 times 0 0.254 upon Cl naught is 0 0.07 plus XAC of the wing is 0 0.0865. Okay. So, if you do that the new XCG, the new CG with respect to leading edge of CR. Okay. So, the same thing is equals to minus 0 0.0115 meters. So, approximately 
it should be 1.1 1 .1 or 11, 11 mm ahead of the so this so this new cg so has to be 0 0.011 yeah 5 meters which is approximately 11 mm ahead of the leading edge so this is the new cg so initially the cg is here now adding a motor to make cm not 0 so a mass of motor that makes cm not 0 so for the I need yeah, cut this part. So this is the new CG location, which is 0 0.015 meters ahead of the leading edge of the root cord, right? So I need to bring the CG, which is from 0.75 meters, to this particular location, the new CG location. So by adding a mass of motor, by, by adding a motor of mass mm, right? So I have this X CG here. So this must be the new location. Now the the minus here indicates that the CG is ahead of the leading edge here, right? So now with respect to the boom, this location will be like length of the boom by 2 minus CR by 2 minus this particular length, right? So that is when I know what is this length. If I subtract this length, I am here. And if I subtract this distance further from the leading edge, which is the new CG location, I will be at the CG location with respect to the starting of this boom, right? So X boom, X CG, with respect to boom is equals to L by 2 which is length of boom by 2 minus CR by 2 plus XCG. If you do a vectorial sum it is this otherwise you take the absolute value of it otherwise plus XCG with respect to leading edge of CR. So this is how much 0 0.75 minus 0 0.75. 5, right? Plus or this is minus 0 0.0115. What is the value? 0 0.5885. Okay. So the maximum weight of the motor has to be. So say if this is the CG, then uh, so this is XCG with respect to the boom is equals to point. 5885 0 0.5885 this one is so this has to be this particular value you substitute this value there and you will be able to find out the mass of the motor the maximum mass of the motor that still allows cm not to be no zero or non negative is is equals to so 0 0.2467 kg so, which is approximately 247 grams, right? So, you can add 247 grams here. If you add 247 grams, this makes CM not zero, right? That is how we calculated. So, anything less than two port, maybe 247 can be the maximum weight, right? That makes CM not zero, or 246.9 grams maybe, no? Or anything a gram less than this will make CM not positive some positive value. Okay. So, this is the uh, maximum minimum weight and how the CG shifts and how you can play with CM naught and CM alpha of the configuration. Right? So, we will continue with this uh, with one more small example problem. What we will try to do is, uh, so assuming a motor mass of some grams, we will find out what is CM alpha and CM naught of the configuration. Right? So, that will be the final exercise for today. So, this is question 3 no? so, or C. So, assume the motor mass is 0.3 kg, sorry, 0.2 kg. Find the CM naught and CM alpha of the UAV. Right? So, simple question. So, so this is the same data. You are given the mass of the motor as 0 0.2 kg. Here, the mass of the motor is 0 0.2 kg. So, the XCG, so solution, so we know CM naught has to be. CMAC of the wing 
plus C L naught of the wing times x bar C G minus x bar A C of the wing. So this is with respect to leading edge of the root quads. And similarly, C M alpha is minus so C L alpha times of the wing times x bar C G minus x bar A C of wing. Okay. So now, first of all, I need to we need to find x C G with this motor configuration. We know what is x A C of the wing. We need to find out what is x C G with this current motor configuration. So without motor, the x C G is about with the rest of the mass, the x C G is about 0.75 meters. So the new CG with respect to boom is equals to mass of the motor times x CG of motor plus mass of rest times x CG of rest upon mass of motor plus mass of rest. Okay. So this equals to mass of motor is 0.2 times 0 because we are mounting exactly at the starting of this and assume that the CG of this motor coincides with the leading or uh, the starting point of the boom. Okay. So is equals to, so plus a mass of the rest is 0 0.9 kg times 0 0.75 upon 0 0.2 plus 0 0.9. So what will be the CG location with respect to the boom? 0 0.675 upon 1.1 it is 61 centimeters behind. Right. XCG is one, uh, 0.675 upon 1.1 1 .1, which is 0.6135, 0.6136 meters. So, which is approximately 61.4 centimeters behind the boom, right. The current CG location is behind the boom, behind the starting of the boom, right and uh, located at a distance of 0 0.6 meters. 6 meters, 61 meters from the, yeah, from the, from the point. So now you need to find out what is CM0 and CM alpha, it is straightforward. So the CM0 of the configuration at this CG location. So now I have to shift this CG location to, with, so this equation is <coughs> either I need to uh, take this distance with respect to uh, aerodynamic center with respect to the boom. Right or with respect to the leading gauge. So now I prefer shifting the CG from boom with respect to boom, boom to with respect to leading edge of the uh, root cord. Okay. So this is with respect to boom. Now if I have to shift this to XCG, so with respect to leading edge of CR, so what I need to do? So I know CR by 2, right, which is this distance, I know this reference point because with respect to this I know the leading edge. Okay. Now I need to find out with respect to leading edge, I have to consider any one of the references. So I, I, I would like to prefer to consider this midpoint as the reference here. So with respect to this, this I know this distance and with res from this point, otherwise vice versa, like from this point I know this distance and from this point I know the CG location, right. So if I subtract that those two from this and what I end up is this particular uh, the distance between the CG and the midpoint of here. Am I correct? CG and midpoint, let us say the CG is uh, somewhere here, this particular point. Okay. So on this axis I just projected this at this particular point. So what I am trying to do is I am subtracting this distance from this entire distance, right. What I am end up with is this particular distance, okay. Now I have CR by 2, if I subtract this, I have that particular location with respect to the leading edge of the root cord, okay. Got it? So what I have is, first I am trying to subtract these two, the CG location with respect to the boom, which is 0 0.6136, right. So this will help me to figure out what is this distance, right. So now from CR by 2 which is uh, like with respect to from the midpoint I am subtracting this difference, right. That will help me to find out what is the location of this point with respect to the leading edge of the root cord. Here. So this minus CR by 2. So from this I am subtracting that. So what I end up with 
is about 0 0.0136. Meters. So, 1.3 centimeters, like 13 mm behind the leading edge of the root cord. So, and my aerodynamic center is at? With respect to that, it is about? 0.0865 Which is 8.6 mm, right? This is like 8.6 centimeters. This is 1.3 centimeters ahead behind the leading edge and that one is 8.6 centimeters behind the leading edge. So, the aerodynamic center is behind the CG here, correct. So, in that case we have CM alpha negative and C, we will see whether CM naught is positive or not, okay. So, with, with a motor of 200 grams what will be the corresponding CM naught and CM alpha of this config, that is what we are calculating right now. So, CM alpha is CL alpha of wing times x bar cg which is 0 with respect to leading edge of the root cord minus x bar ac right 0 0.0856 meters 865 sorry 865 meters so this is approximately 4.05 multiplied by minus 0 0.0729 so this equals to so minus of 0 0.2 yeah, closely minus 0.3, right. CM alpha is minus 0.3 and then CM naught for this, with this motor is CM AC which is 0 0.027 plus CL naught of the configuration is 0 0.07 multiplied by this particular difference which is minus 0 0.0729, right. This equals to 0 0.02. Okay. So, CM naught is positive in this case and CM alpha is negative. That satisfies the static stability conditions. Yeah. Thank you.